Cade Cunningham. He crosses over SGA. He's going to kick it out to Cam Johnson, who gets fouled by Jordan Walsh. What are you doing, you bald bastard? Welcome back, everybody, to another Hoopland video. Today, we are rebuilding one of the most irrelevant basketball teams. And unfortunately for your Brooklyn Nets fans, it's going to be you. And there's a lot of young teams that the NBA has that are not doing very well, but they have bright futures. You know, teams like the Houston Rockets that are hitting on draft picks. You know, the Thunder, who are a little bit ahead of schedule. But this Nets team is one of the worst situations in the entire NBA. Mikel Bridges, who looked like a very promising piece from the Phoenix Suns is not really becoming that number one or even really number two option. He's at extremely high usage this season and his efficiency is pretty terrible, but there is a little bit of a bright spot in Cam Thomas who is averaging over 20 points per game. You know, Cameron Johnson's still a good player and Nick Claxton as well. So this team has some talent, but I'm afraid it's in purgatory unless big moves are made and that is what we're gonna be doing today. And if you guys want access to these rosters, it'll be in my Discord, which is gonna be the first link in the description. Looking at this team overall, we kind of talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but the first person I want to highlight is obviously Mikel Bridges. Now, Mikel Bridges is a great player overall. People thought that he had the potential to be a number one option as he was overperforming in Phoenix. And, uh, you know, it was a great asset to acquire for the Brooklyn Nets. He's averaging like 20 points per game on 35 minutes a night. It is not great efficiency by any means. But that is actually because Cam Thomas has become the leading scorer for the Brooklyn Nets. I don't know if he's really reached his true potential. I think this is kind of his max. I think in an ideal role, he would be all, uh, coming off the bench as our, our leading scorer there. For now, he's going to be starting. Cameron Johnson, a very solid power forward. He can stretch the floor. Lonnie Walker, good spark off the bench. Ben Simmons, I thought this was going to be the year he finally figured it out. If you look at his attributes, you know, 1.5, 3-point, 1.5 mid-range, that might even somehow still be generous. But he's clearly just shown that he's not going to ever develop in that way. He's honestly looking like he's not going to be in the NBA for much longer, especially on his giant contract. It's absurd what he's getting paid right now. Dron Sharp, solid, uh, solid big man. Dariq Whitehead, very excited for him. He can play the two. He can play the three. He's a solid defender out of Duke. Uh, you know, good, good blue blood. He should be able to develop into something nice for us. Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, a nice vet but you know he's not going to be on the team for very long same with Dennis Smith Trent Wadford solid big man off the bench Noah Clowney out of Bama he's got some potential you know I'm looking forward to developing him and then like I said before in the intro it's going to be uh, trying to retain Nick Claxton wherever he's hiding at right here very good defender inside he can, can defend the paint very well he can finish so here's the lineup for year one we're going to go with 28 minutes a night for Dennis Schroeder Cam Thomas 34 minutes Mikel Bridges 36 and then here's our bench rotation Noah Clowney not going to get any minutes this year in his rookie season but Derek Whitehead's going to get 14 minutes per night hopefully Lonnie Walker can get close to Six man of the year. It's going to be an uphill battle. Currently, with those minutes, we're looking at 14th overall for offense and second to last as far as defense. So we're just going to simulate through and hopefully we can get uh, at least the top five odds for the first pick in the draft. End of season and Victor Wembanyama wins rookie of the year. 24, 10, 3, 1, and 3. Defensive player of the year is Victor Wembanyama and Shea on 34, 6, and 7 with two steals per night, wins MVP. OKC is the number one seed out west. And uh, looks like we did not have a ton of injuries because uh, if we're seeing eight notifications, that means there's four injuries and then four returning. What was our record overall? We'll go ahead and look based on the East. We were the third worst team in the East, 29 and 53. Average 117 points per game, and the defense was atrocious. Starting off with a point guard, Dennis Schroeder, 14 points, three rebounds, five and a half assists. Cam Thomas, 22, four and one and a half. Gonna have to get his playmaking up. Mikel Bridges, 20 and a half points, six and three. Cam Johnson, 16 points, five rebounds, three assists, and Nick Claxton, averaging 15 and 10 with uh, how many blocks? Hopefully, at least two blocks per game. 2.3. So a potential DPOY in the future. Maybe, maybe not. Lonnie Walker, nine points off the bench. Uh, Derek Whitehead in his rookie year, five points, two rebounds, and, and about an assist. So he's going to develop into something, hopefully, because I, I think he's got potential. Uh, we, we need basically anybody that's got potential with this team. I feel like, like I said before, it's got a very gloomy future. As Memphis wins the finals in Game 7, as Jalen Brunson wins finals MVP, one of the only times a losing team's ever had finals MVP, but I suppose you look at this run overall, the Knicks go to seven with the Pacers, and then they go to seven with the Grizzlies. So maybe it was just an all-around effort, and Jalen Brunson put his team on his back. We did import the draft class for 2025. I'm working on a 2026 one and an imaginary one with uh, accurate players and prospects that are going to actually work with the rosters I have. But for now, they are not finished. We have the fourth best odds, 10%. I'm just going to hope and pray that we can at least get in the top three, because right now, 
Looking at the draft, there's two players I really want. Hopefully, we can not pick at five. We, we dropped a spot. Okay, I was wondering why everything got highlighted. It's because we got fucked up. Okay, so we pick at five. We didn't do any scouting, but I kind of have a good idea of what I think about these players. Obviously, I'm the one that made it. Three Euro players go, and, and Cody Williams as well. So kind of everybody I wanted pretty much gone. So not that that's everybody. And there's going to be some players that, again, I don't think Trayvon Brazil is going to be a fucking lottery pick, clearly. There's some adjusting I still need to do. Baba Miller also out of FSU is not one of them. It says he's for Kansas. As you can see, logos as well. There's, there's a lot of UI issues currently. But regardless of that, there is a few players I'm looking at. Number one being uh, Matis Buzelis, who I think has an extremely high upside out of the G League Ignite. We are picking at fifth overall, so we have to make sure we can take somebody that's actually going to have an impact. But well, we really need a guard. Who who could be a guard? If we if Nikola Topic was still on the board, I definitely would have considered taking him. Reed Shepard out of Kentucky could also play point guard for us. Uh, again, don't worry about the stats. There's also the chance we could take Stefan Castle if we trade it down a little bit. Isaiah Collier as well. I think Matis Buzelis has the highest overall potential, so we're going to go with him in the fifth overall pick to Jean Salon goes sixth overall and we're going to simulate to our next pick somehow Ron Holland is still on the board I don't know how or why maybe some some medical issues as he is slipping down uh very very far and he's also another G League Ignite player we also have Mark Sears Cam Spencer out of UConn I think I'm going to go with another G League player I don't know how Ron Holland fell to the top of the second round who, you know, was projected to go number one overall in the beginning of some mock drafts in the beginning of the year. And now we get two G League Ignite players in this draft class. So we're going to sign our rookies. Hopefully they can make an impact for us. Ron Holland being a, a very versatile defender. Going to be able to learn a lot from Mikel Bridges. And Matis Buzelis is basically just a ball of clay. You know, he's a knockdown shooter. He's got extremely good length. He's 6'10". As uh, we got a few expiring contracts. Nick Claxton was somebody I knew that we needed to bring back. And we're going to offer him as much as we possibly can because we have to ensure he signs with us whenever it's time to sign players. He gets a shit ton of offers as you can see there. Uh, Bates Diop not worried about bringing him back. Trent Wofford, I'm thinking there's going to be too many forward minutes, especially after drafting uh, Buzelis. Lonnie Walker is somebody that I would consider bringing back. We don't really have a ton of scoring off the bench at the moment. In fact, I would honestly consider starting Lonnie Walker probably at the one, or we could actually run Mikel Bridges at the one, kind of kind of a point forward approach. Uh, but I don't really like that. We're definitely going to look to sign a point guard in free agency. I feel like a lot of these signings would be pretty lateral moves. But at the same time, too, I think of a two-year, $12 million with a team option. It's it's a low ball for sure for Russell Westbrook, but we definitely need somebody that can provide a little bit of a spark. We could have potentially offered D'Lo a contract, but he wants a lot of money. It doesn't mean I'm out on Lonnie Walker, though, but the bidding is kind of a little higher than I'd like. I'll offer him the same contract that everybody else is just to see if I can get him back. If we look at our lineup as well, I think we have one too many big men. Yeah, Noah Clowney's probably going to take the developing steps, so Trenton Wofford's going to have to go unfortunately so that is going to be all we offer we're just going to offer russell westbrook and try to bring back our actual uh, our players that are expiring we've got some good things and bad things so first of all nick claxton comes back thank god lonnie walker has gone to the lakers that's honestly understandable russell westbrook signs with us maybe isaiah joe could be a good replacement for uh, lonnie walker he's gonna want basically the same amount of money i do think eventually that quality game is going to be adding some sort of development league for players you know that you can't really start right away because right now the rookies that come in they, they drop extremely low basically every single one of their attributes drops minus four from where they were drafted at so there ends up being you know 48 i think total points from where you actually took them, assuming they maxed out their potential. So long story short, I'm hoping that eventually there is some sort of developmental league, you know, where you can send a player without having to start them so they can still gain XP. Because some players, you know, like Ron Holland, we're going to have to probably give them some time to play. And unfortunately, that's going to cause us to lose games. But it might not be such a bad thing as although we didn't make a lot of moves, I feel like this team is already much better just by bringing in some some good talent. And you better believe that a lot of our rookies are going to be getting some serious playing time. All right, so we're kind of going to be experimenting a little bit, but Mikel Bridge is going to be starting point guard for us in year two. Cam Thomas, Derek Whitehead going to get the starting spot at the three. And then we have the usual suspects in the front court. And then the bench is looking like this. Matis Buzel is 20 minutes per game. And again, I'm just multiplying all of the, uh, you know, total minutes by two to get what the accurate NBA minutes would be. Isaiah Joe, 18 minutes. Russ off the bench. And then we've got some vets in Duran Sharp, Ben Simmons, and Dorian Finney-Smith, who are who are definitely solid players, but they're just not going to get any PT for us because we have younger players who are going to get a chance to play and start. So 
I expect this team to be probably even worse than we were last year. I think last year we won like 28 games, 30 games, something like that. It was pretty bad. Maybe Matis Buzelis wins Rookie of the Year coming off the bench. Sometimes the CPU doesn't always start rookies right away, and we're not starting him, but maybe he can be productive. Who knows? Year two is in the books. Kyle Filipowski for the Bulls wins Rookie of the Year. Keontae George, Sixth Man of the Year. Caleb Martin, most improved, starting for the Bucks. Anthony Davis, DPOY, and Luka wins MVP on 33, 7, and 9. Dallas was your number one seed out west. We were even worse than we were last year. We were uh, the third worst team in the league behind, well, I guess, uh, ahead of Washington and the Spurs, who, even with uh, even with Victor Wembanyama, they are not able to do anything, I guess. He's averaging 23, 10, and 3 assists, which is very solid, similar to what he's averaging right now. Uh, he had a 44-point game, but they're not able to do anything, and neither are we. We're two years into this, and we have yet to really make any uh, sizable jump. So we'll go ahead and simulate through the playoffs, and... OKC wins it in six against the Magic. I guess we'll also look at the stats clearly. 21 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, four assists. So his point guard, uh, you know, tryout seems to be decent overall. I don't know if that's something I'm going to continue to do, but Cam Thomas almost 24 points per game on, uh, how many minutes was that? It was very similar to last year, but he took a, a full point per game jump. Got a little bit better in the assist category as well. Doubled his assists. Dariq Whitehead in his first full season starting almost 12 points four and a half rebounds two assists cam johnson almost 18 points per game six and four he's a very solid power forward he's spreading the ball around very nicely and nick claxton on uh, very very similar minutes as last year uh, you know, he's not really giving me any more scoring punch, but you know, he's still a solid center. Matis Buzelis, four points, two and a half rebounds, and a half an assist. Isaiah Joe, close to 10 points. Almost probably was close to winning uh, sixth man of the year. He was ninth. Somehow he was ninth. Okay, points per game. There, there's quite a bit of scoring off the bench if you actually look at it. And then MVP, Luca was number one, but Halliburton, SGA, Giannis, and Book in the top five. We're going to decline his option uh, as he's... He's got the full, the full, I don't even know what the hell you call that. You got the, he looks like Saturn right now. Player option declined for DFS. That's fine. We didn't even have him starting at all. We probably could have gotten some draft compensation for him. You know, it is what it is. We have the second best odds tied with San Antonio. We fell to fifth last year. So hopefully we can at least stay where we're projected to be. Obviously these uh, draft classes are not going to be as entertaining or probably as talented as the ones that I import and make myself, but hopefully they can be decent as we are not at fourth, at third. Okay, we're third overall. We didn't fall, and again, didn't do any scouting, so I see I have made a grave mistake. I have not only imported my draft class, but I also imported the college roster, which has all of these players, so now we have duplicates of uh, at least... 15 to 20 decent players so i don't really know what to do with that information i guess we'll just draft somebody that probably could have went in next year's draft and that is tyrese proctor see we clearly messed up this is not something that i foresaw by any means because i'm certainly not going to restart this rebuild even though there are some duplicate players most of them probably will not make too big of an impact in the league overall we'll say tyrese proctor yeah that was what i was originally thinking we're going to go ahead and take him at third overall i guess we could also probably take jared mccain there's a chance he stays in school probably probably not he's probably going to be a close to a lottery pick but definitely will go in the first round this year deron sharp is not going to be coming back so that's not going to happen ben Simmons also not going to be coming back. Thank God. Cam Thomas will be getting a, a nice juicy contract for me. So we've cleared up quite a bit of salary cap, but this team is looking not good right now. Free agents. There's a couple calves in here. Uh, Jalen Brunson. Uh, finals MVP is available. Brandon Ingram is a player that I would definitely be interested in bringing in. Could provide a, a good scoring punch for us. Uh, maybe Paul George in his later years, but he's 35. So that's that's honestly a little too old for us. Even if Matis Buzelis develops into his full potential, we've got one too many cooks in the kitchen, assuming that Mikel Bridges isn't starting at point guard for us. So, But we have to wait if we're going to make a trade until after free agency because the, the cap right now is going to be all messed up. There's going to be too many teams offering a shit ton of contracts out. There's going to be no cap room available. There's some pretty good players that are not getting any offers. Moses Moody, Christian Brown... Andrew Nemhard. Do we think that Cade Cunningham just says, you know what, fuck it. I I'm getting out of Detroit. They're just not taking care of me. We offer him a giant contract compared to what he's getting. And maybe we can sign him. Maybe. Let's check it out. We got him. Cade Cunningham. Welcome to New York, buddy. And that makes this team look way better. Now we got a couple expendable pieces. Uh, it's probably going to be, if it's up to the three 
uh, you know, wings. Mikel Bridges, unfortunately, is probably going to be the odd man out. We're going to make an offer on Andrew Nemhard. He's, he's a solid player. He's got a four-star overall potential, and he's basically maxed out at this point, but he's a good young player. I really need to think about what I'm actually trying to accomplish if I do trade away Mikel Bridges, because if I do, it might be a lateral move, and we could maybe make another trade with the uh, with the Cavaliers. I guess we're just going to keep our team the way it is for now. Cade Cunningham definitely makes things a lot more clear. All right, we got the minutes set for year three. Cade Cunningham and Nick Clack actually going to be getting the bulk of the uh, minutes but cam johnson going to take a big step in this season going to get 36 minutes per night basically our starters are going to get ran into the ground but i think it's it's a good strategy because we've got a decent bench overall a very young bench as we have the 11th best offense 21st best defense uh it says we're gonna be middle of the pack i think we should be decent i think we should at least be able to make a play-in berth especially in the east and, and if not i think this is definitely a disappointing year everybody's been you know progressing very well for the most part we've been making some good signings and i think that the starters should be able to carry us to a decent record i'm hoping for at least 500 and we are in the play-in for season number three we managed to finish 42 and 40 overall 17th in the entire nba 123 points per game before we get into the plan let's look at the stats taking quite the jump here in year four or i guess year three but that's understandable because we have a player like cade cunningham who's averaging 24 7 and 8 cam thomas 21 3 and two and a half he's kind of taking a little bit of a step back he's kind of a smaller role over our overall Mikel Bridges 18 4 and 3 Cam Johnson 18 6 and 4 and a half and Nick Claxton 15 9 and 2 with uh hopefully two and a half blocks per game two and a half blocks per game it is Matis Buzelis uh it's going to be quite the developing path for him he's got six points two rebounds and an assist per game Drake Whitehead solid points off the bench as well and we will be taking on the Raptors in game one of the play-in tournament they have a little bit worse of an offense than us and they only lead us in steals slightly it's Emmanuel Quigley RJ Barrett Bruce Brown Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pertl so the basic same team that you've seen uh, to this point in real life as we are the eighth seed so that means that we have to either win this one or the next one we sim it and we lose to Toronto, but we are not out of it. Game two against the 10 seed New York Knicks. Again, we have a couple point per, point per game lead against them. They're starting Thomas Bryant at the five. We have all double digit scores. In fact, everybody is above 15 points or higher per game. Let's go ahead and beat this 36 and 46 New York Knicks team. We got absolutely fucking destroyed, lost by over 20 points. Jalen Brunson puts the team on his back, and we miss the playoffs for year number three. Kali Ware, who was already in this draft, wins Rookie of the Year. DPOY goes to Joel Embiid, and Luka wins his second straight MVP. Simulate through the playoffs. Please don't let the Knicks win it. Thank God. The Grizzlies win it. Ja is back. Uh, they beat the defensive P.O. Y in seven. I don't know why I, I abbreviated it. Salary cap going to get bumped up slightly as Luca is going to become a free agent. Noah Clowney will accept his option because he's cheap. Isaiah Joe uh, will decline his option. And Derek Whitehead will also bring back. So we're getting to the point where all, all of our rookies that we had when we started this rebuild are up for grabs. Utah gets the number one overall pick and they are going to select Chester Lawrence out of FAU. This Wallace Thornton fella looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and take him. He's averaging... 13 points in college. Hopefully a, a decent backup guard for us. And in the second round, we'll take Jerome Gregory just because he's got his last name is the first name of, of me. So I guess the only player we need to bring back is Mikel Bridges. Now, based on his stats, he is slowly getting worse. He's averaging now 18 and a half points per game. So what do we think? Is there any option where he doesn't come back to the team and the team is better I, i'm trying to see if there's any spot where the the lineup opens up i think derek whitehead could give you the same production or at least maybe somebody else off the bench orlando's already offering mikhail bridges a contract i think i'm out on mikhail bridges shane sharp could also be a potential odd man out in portland because of the kind of guard conglomeration if we just give him a shit ton of money and say hey you'll get a starting role for us you're going to be able to make an impact on this team does that do it for him and then benedict matherin was our other option i think we're gonna hopefully get who did we get we got shane sharp and we lost out on mikhail bridges that's completely fine 
He goes to the Orlando Magic. He was going to be projected to start at the three for us. We could put him at the two and make Derek Whitehead our starting small forward and then hopefully just have, where the hell did he go? Yeah, Cam Thomas could be our sixth man. I kind of like that. Could Cameron Johnson play the three for us? That is the question. He's 6'8", 210. He can stretch the floor. I think we're going to shell out even more money. We're going to go ahead and try to bring in Jabari Smith Jr. What are his stats looking like? He did get injured in 2016. But I think he's got a good three-point shot, and it's probably developing pretty well. 20 minutes per game last year, and he's averaging 20 points. Let's go ahead and look at what our actual uh, roster is going to look like before we decide to potentially bring him in. You know what? I'm going to do it. C can we offer him a contract? I think we have enough cap room. It's only, it's only asking for 18 mil. Okay, we bring in Jabari Smith Jr. He's going to start at our four. A lot of our starters getting a lot of minutes. That's kind of a trend here. Cade Cunningham, 36 minutes, Shaden Sharp, Cam Johnson going to start at the three for us, and then Cam Thomas, our sixth man. This is exactly what I envisioned for uh, for this team as a, a potential push for the playoffs is looming. I mean, we've sniffed it a little, but we have not been able to put our foot in the door, and this year I think is going to be different. I don't, Before I simulate, let me see, where is our star ranking? First offense, 10th defense, second overall. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, but based on the minutes that you have, it kind of gives you a good projection all right year four is in the books and we are going to be knocking out the play-in and i already saw in the top right that we were not going to be in the play-in because we were the number one seed overall marvin stevens wins the rookie of the year j-dub coming off the bench that's kind of ridiculous assist leader is not tyrese halliburton it is actually lamella ball as dpoy goes to wemby he wins his second and tyrese halliburton does win MVP. So he doesn't lead the league in assists, but I think you'd take that if it meant you could win MVP as, like I said, 62 and 20 for the Brooklyn Nets. Cade Cunningham, 26 points per game, seven rebounds, eight assists, all-star MVP, and he made his first all-star team. He is the best point guard based on his age and attributes in the NBA. So we made a great signing with him. Shane Sharp, 23, four and five. So a little bit of playmaking. He is the sixth rated overall uh, I guess small forward, even though he's playing out of position slightly. Cam Johnson at small forward, who's also playing kind of out of position. 17 and a half, five and five. So a very solid outing for him. Jabari Smith Jr., the newly acquired uh, former Rocket, now net is 16, eight and an assist per game. How many blocks? 1.2 blocks, almost a steal per game. Pretty good. And then Nick Claxton, slowly diminishing his offensive workload, but that's completely fine. Uh, he's playing similar minutes, 13 points, eight rebounds. Two and a half blocks per game. So he's able to focus more on defense. Cam Thomas did not win six man of the year, but he had 14 points, three rebounds, and two assists off the bench. And then Matis Buzelis kind of been a little bit underwhelming. Let's go ahead and look at the MVP race and see how close uh, maybe Cade was to becoming a future MVP of the league. He was with the number one overall rated team. He was seventh somehow, which is a little bit surprising, but I guess he doesn't have the scoring output to really be able to get and any contention for that. And Jalen Williams coming off the bench is probably why, you know, Cam Thomas can't win uh, sixth man of the year. And Herb Jones coming off the bench, still averaging 14 points when that is not really his specialty. It's pretty impressive. How good is this Thunder team to where he is coming off the bench? They also were in the 60 wins. Trey Young, SGA, Jordan Walsh starting at the three. Don't tell me he actually started all 82 games what the fuck what the actual fuck is going on here all right well j-dub came off the bench because jordan walsh decided to start so all right hopefully that's what they rock with if we end up facing them in the finals as we take on the number eight seed boston celtics we are almost 10 points per game better than them deron sharp starting at center so i guess it's kind of a revenge uh, Drew Holiday still playing. He's got to be 37 years old at this point. He's 36 and he has no hair. Okay, so let's hopefully get through this one pretty quickly. Uh, let's make light work of the Celtics. We win a one-point game. Game two is another win, another close one. Cade with a 19-point triple-double. Very impressive stuff. As we get another win, this one by 15 points. Cade with 32, 9, and 8. Hopefully we can just sweep this team and move on to the next round. Rest our guys, you know, get a little bit healthy and just move on. Okay, I, I try to speak a little too soon. Shane Sharp, good scoring output. Cade Cunningham gets injured and puts up one rebound, no points. Is he going to be able to play through this injury? That's the real question. And uh, we sweep them in a gentleman's sweep, 27, 10, and 10 for Cade. And we move on to the second round. So we're going to have a lot of time to rest up here. And we're going to get into game number one against the Milwaukee Bucks. 
who just edges out slightly in offensive production. Bobby Porter starting for them at the five, Jalen Johnson at the two, or at the three, and then Anthony Black at the two. So he looks like he's developed pretty well. Developing very well, actually. And uh, Damian Lillard has uh, no hair again, but that's fine. Jalen Johnson, 20.7 rebounds and uh, quite a bit of playmaking. He's, he's a three-time All-Star at this point, and so is Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis snuck in the All-Star game before Giannis did. Let's go ahead and simulate game number one in Brooklyn. It's a win. It's a 16-point win. Game number two is another win by 30 points. K drops 41 Giannis 36 and 10. 10 assists. Look at the playmaking from Cam Johnson. We love to see that. Can we go 3 0? We do a two point lead. This team is just too well rounded. Cam Thomas off the bench had 21 points. We haven't even developed our players yet. Can we sweep the Bucks and move on? We do not. Please tell me nobody's injured like it happened last time. Okay, everyone looks healthy. Another gentleman sweep. A high scoring game 145 to 130. Shaden Sharp getting his playmaking on with double digit assists. And we move on to the Eastern Conference Finals after not even making the playoffs last year or the year before or the year before. We take on the Charlotte Hornets. It's LaMelo Ball who led the league in assists. DeJounte Murray at the two, Brandon Miller at the three, Mikel, no, not Mikel Bridges, Miles Bridges at the four, and Mark Williams at the five. So this team is very stout. It's a very well developed team overall. They're number one in overall, number one in defense. Every starter on their team, besides their center, who had two blocks per game, had at least one steal per game. So defensively, this team is kind of nuts. Points per game, a very well split, you know, uh, between the front and back court. This team is going to be probably harder than either team we play out west. And that's literally being against the Thunder or the Nuggets. But we do have an amazing roster through and through. So game number one is a loss. And we tie up the series. We get a nice, huge win. 135 to 105. Shane Sharp, have yourself a day, buddy. 38 points, 8 rebounds, 11 assists. Going into Charlotte here for game three. And we get a win. A close one. 7-point win. Another one in Charlotte. It's going to be a knotted up series. They destroy us, and uh, LaMelo drops 53. Holy shit. Who didn't come to play? Uh, everybody, basically. Nick Claxton, four points. Cam Thomas had 29 points off the bench. He led our team in scoring. That's kind of too good. I, I don't like that, because that means that nobody on our uh, on the starting lineup is actually going to do anything. So let's go ahead and, and rock a black uniform to signify the death of this playoff run. Oh, just kidding. We get a win in game five, 130 to 126. Cade comes back swinging, drops almost 40. Can we finish this series out in Charlotte? I don't care if we do it on our home court or not. I just don't want to keep playing against this team. This team's too stacked. Quick sim game number five, and it is. It's game number six, and it's a win. Not game number five. It's a three-point win. Cade, 36, 7, and 5. Brandon Miller tries to lead the team in scoring for Charlotte, and it is not enough. We get out of there, which that was going to be a tough matchup no matter what. Team was just insanely stacked defensively, offensively. And now I'm hoping that the Nuggets win because the Thunder are going to be disgusting with J-Dub coming off the bench. I didn't even bother looking at what the Nuggets were pushing out. It looks like basically their normal starting lineup besides Julian Strother, the uh, Gonzaga great is in the starting lineup. Usually Nikola Jokic isn't as dominant when you play against him, but I don't really know how much I'll be hopping into this. Hopefully I won't have to. Hopefully I can just simulate and win as it is a very close game going into the tail end of this fourth quarter. OKC starting to pull away. Eight point lead and it's going to be OKC closing it out. 44 points from SGA at the two guard. That is going to be who we play. It's a one seed versus one seed. 0.4 points per game lead over us. Jordan Walsh starting at the three again. I mean, I don't know how many times I need to say it. Hopefully we can take advantage of that. Let's go ahead and quick sim game number one and we get a win. Okay, OKC goes down, Jordan Walsh, four points. I don't get it, though, because Jalen Williams is a guard forward, which means he has the flexibility of playing the three, but yet the CPU just doesn't want him to, I guess. Yeah, they'd rather have his scoring punch off the bench. It is what it is. It's not my team, not my problem. Game number two, and it's another win, a six-point win. SGA drops 48. It's not enough. Cade doesn't care about assisting or rebounding, just says, I guess I'll just drop 27. We'll call it a day. Wait, what was the scoring off the bench for us? Cam Thomas, 20 points. He's honestly the unsung hero of this whole entire playoff run so far. Game three, and it's a 3-0. Let's go. Brooklyn goes up by eight. Cade, 19 and 10. Five steals. Can we close it out here? in game number four, live sim. Please just hold on until the fourth quarter. We'll hop into it if it's close. Uh, I'm hoping we don't have to do anything too crazy. It's very neck and neck right now. 
It's knotted up 122 all in the fourth, 129 even. Gordon Hayward misses the shot. Offensive rebound, top into it. Trey Young with the ball at the top. They're giving it out to Chet, who's gonna dunk it. They're gonna go down by one now, cutting the lead just ever so slightly. Cade Cunningham. He crosses over SGA. Trey Young's gonna say, I'm not playing defense. He's gonna kick it out to Cam Johnson, who gets fouled by Jordan Walsh. What are you doing, you bald bastard? Cam Johnson, 13 points. Jordan Walsh, you buffoon. There's, ha, I feel like that was a perfect release. I mean, damn near. How does that roll in and out? I feel like the Scott Foster's gotta be paying somebody off for this one. Please go in. How does that go? No, what are you doing? How does that go out? I feel like these were two great releases. Jordan Walsh, don't do it. Oh my God, Trey Young did not just dunk the ball. What the hell's going on here? He's one for six from three. Cade Cunningham, give me a pick and roll. Nice. Okay, just gonna let me just go for it, thank you. I don't know how I missed either of those free throws. I feel like they were pretty on the money. Are we gonna, are we gonna play any defense inside? What are we paying Nick Claxton for if he's not gonna guard Chet Holmgren? Shaden Sharp, go for the oop. Why is Shaden Sharp not cutting? There we go, reverse, reverse dunk. It's a 17 point game up by, or 17 second game up by two points. Oh my God, SGA, how did he, how did he get over there? How did he get to the corner so quickly on the inbound? Cade Cunningham, wide open at the top of the key. Just pull up, please cash that. Oh my God, Cade Cunningham. Put the dagger in him, please. Up by two, nine seconds left. Trey Young trying to get shifty. We're trying to double. Don't foul. Jordan Walsh gets blocked. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Why are you starting? Nick Claxton goes to the line. Just knock at least one of these down. Okay. Nice. Knock the second one down and let's get out of here with a win. Please go in. Oh my God, it fell in. Four point game. This is all over. Just don't foul. Don't do anything. Let him shoot. It's off. Let's go. Jordan Walsh secures the rebound and we secure the NBA championship. Nick Claxton, 27, 8, and 5. Dominating inside if you look at all those uh, all those little green circles. Look at that. The NBA champions of 2027, the Brooklyn Nets. We're getting the trophy in OKC. We're fucking just making all the fans go home early. They're collecting the hardware. And in four seasons, we go from not making the playoffs get even worse in the second year losing in the play-in and now we sweep one of the youngest best most promising teams it was a fucking sweep how how do you give finals mvp to sga okay i don't care we still won i don't it doesn't matter i wish i could just assign the award to somebody else i wish i could override that but i don't care because you know what the brooklyn nets are your 2027 national basketball association champions of the world was that a long enough title i hope it was if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like subscribe so you don't miss the next one and i will see you then take it easy